Let's go through the exercise of creating a data frame. More often than not, we will refer to a data frame as DF, but when we have multiple data frames, we will need to get more descriptive with each. Before we can begin, we need to make sure we import our pandas package. To do this, we can write import pandas as pd. Again, pd is the alias that you will see often, and let's run it. Great, now we can use pandas in our Jupyter Notebook. If we just wanted to create an empty data frame, then we can run the following command. pd, which is again pandas, dot data frame. Note that we have to save it to a variable if we want to access it from memory. So in our case, let's save it to a data frame df. So let's run this. The dot notation after the PD is us telling pandas we want to go one level deeper in the library and access the data frame method. If we print it, we should expect to get an empty data frame, which is exactly what we get. To create a useful data frame, we need to pass in some sort of data and then the corresponding column names. Let's say we have data for the Los Angeles Lakers roster and we want to create an LA Lakers data frame. In this instance, let's use a dictionary since we are familiar with it from our previous exercise. We have various keys and values for a handful of the players on the Lakers roster. So let's run this, Lakers dictionary, and we can see it was the fourth cell we've run. Then, just like before, we can create a new data frame, but this time pass in the Lakers dictionary as our object. So PD dot data frame, and then within it, let's pass in our Lakers dictionary. And again, if we want to actually use it later on, we need to save it. Let's override our above DF. When we print the data frame, this time we should get some actual numbers. It should look similar to what you would be used to in Excel. Here, pandas will recognize the keys as the column names and automatically generate a sequence of row index. As you see, the zero through four is the custom sequence of row index numbers that pandas generated. If, let's say, we didn't want the default row index, we could also create our own by passing in an index parameter in the data frame method. For example, if we wanted to start at one instead of zero, then we could pass the following pd dot data frame lakers dict and this time we're going to pass in a second parameter an index with a list of numbers and this time we want it to be one two three four five and again let's save this to our df variable Go ahead and print it. And you'll see now we have one through five as our custom index. And as you may have guessed, it doesn't always have to be numbers. It could also be a string. So for example, if we took our Lakers dictionary and we passed the index, which this time will be a list of strings, let's call LeBron a playmaker. Let's call Kyle Kuzma, position power forward. We'll say Lonzo Ball is our point guard. We'll say Brandon Ingram as the small forward and Josh Hart as a shooting guard. And again, save it to our DF data frame. And if we print it, we get our custom index labels. Keep in mind that you want indexes to be unique, so you can use it as a reference to grab specific cell values. We can also create data frames from a list of lists. Let's say we had three Lakers and their defensive and offensive rebounds from last night's game. So let's create an empty list of stats called stats. And within it, we'll have LeBron,
his four offensive rebounds and six defensive rebounds. We'll have Kuzma, who had two offensive rebounds and four, three defensive rebounds. And one last list, Lonzo Ball, who had four offensive rebounds and four defensive rebounds. Let's run this. And again, we can create the data frame with our pd.data frame. And this time we're gonna pass in the stats. And like above what we did with the index parameter, we can also pass in a columns parameter, which can be a Python list. And let's call our columns player. O-reb for offensive rebound and D-reb for defensive rebound. And again, let's save this as a stats DF. Run it. And if we print it now, you'll see we have a data frame with our player, the O rebs, and the D rebs. While this may seem a bit overwhelming, have no fear. We will mostly be reading in data to a data frame and then using various methods for manipulating the data. Before moving on, let's touch on Panda series. Now what's a panda series? Well, remember a series is merely a single column of a data frame. So if you have more than one series, you really just have a data frame. So if we wanted to create a series, we can just use a single Python list. So what if we had LeBron's rebounds and we stored it in the list from the last five games he played, which was surprisingly pretty early in the season. So in reverse order, he had six, nine, 11, seven, and three. Now let's save this, run it. And again, we can run the PD data frame and we'll just pass in the revs and let's pass in the column name, LeBron Reb. Save this to a series and run it. And now if we print our series, you'll see it's just a single column. 